Tofu was brought to Japan from China by Buddhist monks more than 800 years ago. In Buddhist circles, where eating meat was forbidden, tofu was a valuable source of protein. With its many temples, Kyoto became the center of tofu culture. People tried serving tofu in many different ways. Raw, grilled, boiled, and deep fried, giving rise to numerous tofu dishes. In the Edo period, tofu became popular among commoners as an inexpensive and nutritious food. A new day begins in Kyoto, a city more than 1,000 years old. A fire is lit in the furnace at the break of dawn. Takashi Iriyama is the owner of a tofu shop that was established during the Edo period. He makes traditional Kyoto-style tofu with his wife and his mother. To preserve the traditional flavor, they do most of the work by hand. Making tofu using firewood and a furnace is no longer common. But the same method has been used since the time this shop delivered tofu to the Kyoto Imperial Palace more than a century ago. The soybeans have been soaked in water overnight. He blends sweet tasting beans together with mild ones. Eighty percent of tofu is water. This shop uses Kyoto's natural groundwater, known for its well-rounded blend of six different minerals. Ground soybeans. Cooking the soybeans until just before they scorch infuses the tofu with the aroma of roasted beans. Takashi stirs the soybeans with all his strength to evenly distribute the heat. The way he adjusts the heat and cooking time determines the flavor of the day's tofu. It takes time and effort, but I'm committed to this method. Stopping right before the beans are scorched makes the tofu delicious. My tofu can only taste this way when it's made with firewood and a furnace. Soy milk with the rich aroma of soybeans is ready. To make the tofu firm, he first adds a calcium sulfate. For tofu, texture is as important as flavor. A calcium sulfate gives the tofu a smooth texture. Next, he adds magnesium chloride, which gives the tofu a resilient texture. Takashi adjusts his strength as he feels increasing resistance. Tofu making is heavily influenced by the weather and the condition of the beans. In order to produce the same flavor, subtle adjustments need to be made every day.
three and a half hours after work began, the tofu is ready to be shaped. He pours it into a mold and wraps it with cotton cloth. The water is slowly squeezed out over 30 minutes. Takashi cuts the tofu with a knife into equally sized pieces. How does it taste today? Its slightly imperfect shape proves that it was made in the traditional method, using natural ingredients only. 100 pieces of tofu are ready for the day. Nine a.m. The shop opens. As if they had been waiting, customers come in one after another to buy tofu for breakfast. <laughs> tofu is best when fresh. Customers who come here first thing in the morning have been coming every single day for decades. The tofu we make is eaten at home on a daily basis. It'll be simmered, grilled, and used for various dishes, so it can't conflict with other ingredients. I believe our tofu tastes light enough so people won't get tired of it, even if they eat it every day. Before noon, Takashi leaves the shop to his wife and goes to sell his tofu in the streets of Kyoto. It's hot. Not a good day. <laughs> 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 
Takashi knows most of his customers. This customer is one of his regulars. He eats Takashi's raw and deep-fried tofu for lunch every day. Peddling tofu was common throughout Japan until about 40 years ago. But it's a rare sight now. Takashi's family has been making tofu using the same method for generations. His parents had resigned themselves to closing down the tofu shop during their generation. But Takashi, who was working as a businessman in Tokyo, decided to take over the business when his father's health deteriorated. It was a challenge to run the business in the old-fashioned way. But Takashi chose not to change anything while he helped his father for six months. The bell has been used since his grandfather's generation. Takashi thought it was his responsibility to deliver the same quality tofu to people who await the sound of his bell. Halfway through his peddling rounds, Takashi takes a rest at a shrine. I come out and pedal in the rain or snow. There are old housebound people who are waiting for me. This is a promise that I have to keep. I believe tofu is the most delicious when it's fresh. So I want to deliver it as soon as it's ready. But there are customers who come to the shop even before the tofu is done. So I have to tell them they are too early. PM, the shop closes. This is the first meal the family eats together. For generations, his family has run this shop. <laughs> Takashi remembers what his father, who was the previous owner, used to say. Don't make a tofu shop big. Tomoko married Takashi three years ago. Every day, she learns how to run a tofu shop from her mother-in-law, who has been doing it for 50 years. Takashi's mother says his tofu is starting to taste like his father's.
At the day's end, Takashi prepares the soybeans for the next day. He washes the beans carefully and soaks them in water. We can't keep making tofu the old way, just for nostalgic reasons. But as long as there are people who think our tofu is delicious and continue to buy it, I will keep up the tradition. The passage of time leaves nothing untouched. But Takashi's dedication to preserving the traditional methods of making tofu assures us that at least one flavor of Kyoto remains unchanged. <laughs>